Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. I've got some new freight cars we need to take a look at. I know, I know, I know. I'm not supposed to be buying stuff right now. Not this close to York. When somebody gets a good deal on a collection and is wonderful enough to pass some of that savings on to you, it, it would be irresponsible not to follow through and not only help them out, but also maybe get a couple items for yourself. Now there's nothing too crazy in this box. Basic post-war stuff, but most of the stuff he only wanted like 10 bucks a car. And you know me, that is right there in my happy place, $10 a car. Saying no to that would just be criminal. Another four bay hopper. I really like these. They're a really good size. They look great, strung all together. So hey, one more for the way up. Now, this is a box car that I have already. It's also one that you can't have too many of. The Baltimore and Ohio automobile car. And this one, the blue is just really nice. Maybe they're all like this and I just haven't looked closely enough at them lately. Now, if it was at a show and they wanted 25 bucks for it, I wouldn't have gone for it. As a matter of fact, there's a price tag that was inside of it that says 50 bucks. Well, guess what? $10 is perfect for me. Well, I obviously like them. So how about the Lehigh Valley four bay hopper in black? You gotta have multiple colors. And this one had a top on it. I don't know that I've seen one of these. It's got just a kind of a clip on each end. Snaps right into these holes right here. That's just cool. Part of the fun of buying a few cars at once and then having them mailed to you is that, well, at least for myself, I forget what was ordered. And this one is no exception. It's an Alcoa aluminum four bay hopper. It's got one bar end and one staple end truck, so obviously it's been switched around a little bit. And it's always fun adding a variation of a car that you don't have. This next one's kind of a classic 6464 box car. Unfortunately, it looks like somebody decided to add some silver accents to it, which is a darn shame. It's the 6464 Rock Island car. Now you can see, unfortunately, little silver things that they painted on there and not well, mind you. So I'll have to look into removing that extra paint, but a car I didn't have, and I'm happy to add to the collection. I had actually gotten away from looking for and collecting the post-war 6464 cars. I have just been really enjoying finding the, well, I guess MPC era and maybe newer uh, reissues of these cars. They roll better, they're 10 bucks most of the time. That's just why I think I've really kind of stopped looking for the post-war 6464s. Uh, probably because most of the ones I have are the ones that were easier to get and less expensive. And I really don't see the point spending a hundred bucks for a 70 year old box car. It's just, I'm not that kind of collector. I'd rather get a newer one that's cheaper, so. But, so it's neat to get another 6464 that I did not have. I'll either have to steal a bottom from another car or find one at a train show. It's not urgent, the show's kind of beat up. The Minneapolis and St. Louis 6464 car. Now I have a reissue of this. So, you know, I've got this shell that's beat up or I have one that's newer that's in perfect condition. So. Either way, cool. I'll find a base for this and add it to the collection. I know I've talked a bit recently and maybe done videos, I can't remember, on the shorter post-war box cars, specifically the Baby Ruth that I really like and uh, the variations of that car and the other cars that are the same size and the same era that I really like. And of course, the Pennsylvania car in brown. I'm happy to add another one of these to the clip. And along the lines of adding another older post-war Pennsylvania car to the roster, this one uh, looks like it took a hit to the truck during shipping, but the car itself's in really nice condition. The Pennsylvania 2458 car. You know, I, I had to get another one of these. 
so that's the truck. It looked like it was in the box like this, so it must have been dropped. But that's okay. That's fixable. These trucks are looking really weird to me. Is it just corrosion on the bottom? Or is there something else going on here? I'll just have to compare it to the other ones. Down to the last two. This is a car I definitely do not have. And I'm not even sure how interested I am in it. It would be the 6434 Poultry Dispatch car. Do I want to keep this? I don't know. Time will tell. Nothing like an old piece that comes in a box. But just to shake things up and be a little different, how about another 2458 car? Can't have too many. Even this box is in really nice condition. All the flaps are present. If I were gonna sell one of these cars, it'd be nice to have the box. But I'm not gonna sell one of them. And this box will probably sit in my garage until it's ruined and I throw it away. I'll service the cars, clean up the trucks, oil them, repair the ones I have to, and get them rolling. I've never looked too closely at these cars. These two look identical, 64361. The bright red one with the AAR trucks. No date stamp on the side. It would be right there in the middle panel. Numbered 6436, no one after it. It's interesting there's no one because if you look at it, the 6436 isn't centered. It's in the same spot that it was on the other one. They just didn't print the ones. This, I guess, Maroon, burgundy, I don't know, whatever color it is. 643625. And again, they both have bar and trucks. The only one different so far has been the bright red car, which have the newer AAR trucks. Another black one, uh, 64361 again. I think it's just the same as the others. So the black cars are all the same. The burgundy cars are all the same. And I only have one of the bright red. So it seems that there were just different varieties based on color. I don't know, I'll have to look into it. Then there's the Alcoa car here, the 634656. So I guess that's from 1956. The sticker is intact on both sides, but coming off, I guess. And this one looks like it shifted on this side, but whatever. And that's got one bar end and one staple end. So obviously one of them is wrong. Then we have the Illuminated Poultry Dispatch 6434. I'm not sure why it's illuminated, other than I guess it's neat. I don't know, it might grow on me. Maybe if I replace the lights inside and get it working, uh, I'll be more enthralled with it.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.